Hello everyone and welcome to the Unreal Engine C++ training series here on Normalish Software. I, like always, am Pharaoh, and today we're going to be talking about tuples. Tuples are a very important concept in C++ which allow us as programmers to return more than one value from a function. Now, other languages have this automatically built into the language, however C++ is not one of those languages. We can, all, we can use tuples, but we can also use uh, other containers like structs or uh, maps or lists or anything else to get this done for us. But one advantage that tuples have is that we don't have to name it and we don't have to do anything special with it. So it's really easy for us to just use it and throw it away if we're going to be doing it in a, in a one case uh, type situation. Now, without further ado, let's get started. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be firing our weapon, just like normal, right? But what we're going to be doing is we're going to get the distance from the player to its target, and we're going to get however many targets are left in the area. This could be uh, implemented in a battle royale type game like uh, player on those battlegrounds or it could be just in any uh, deathmatch type situation where you want to get you want to reward the player uh, I guess for in by increasing the amount of points that they get for long distance kills um, and you also want to see how many people are left in the arena all right so I'm basically just going to replace all of the regular on fire code with some hit result code um, and this hit result is going to be uh, I'm sorry this is ray casting code um, and if you're unfamiliar with the concept of ray casting there's a tutorial in the upper corner of the screen that you can go ahead and click on but basically if you don't if you either don't want to watch that or you don't feel like you need to you can go ahead and copy that code just right there. And all this is going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, compile it, is it's going to fire a uh, raycast, which is going to be something that we're going to be using for uh, this tutorial and is used for most first person shooters and third person shooters for that matter, um, probably since Wolfenstein 3D back in 1992. So this isn't a new concept. So I'm going to hit play and it is firing in the wrong direction so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into content first person CPP blueprints first person character because I have it set up to fire from the first person muzzle location what's happening is that the muzzle location is actually rotated in the wrong direction I don't know why or how this even works but I'm gonna go ahead and try and rotating it Hopefully that's the right direction. If not, then we have to rotate it again. Let's go ahead and try. Nope, and I'm actually firing behind me. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. Compile and save. Save that. All right, now we're firing in the right direction. So we've got our ray casting all set up. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to use the data in order to, I don't know, say, um, send this off to, to a server or to a, a scoring system in a different part of the code base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of this code into a different function and it's going to be a tutorial character and it's gonna be called firing logic I guess and we're gonna move all of this in here and now Unreal Engine and C++ is mad at me because I didn't actually define this function so I'm gonna go, go ahead and do that so I've got void, but I call it firing logic. I'm 
All right, now you should be happy, hopefully. A tutorial character firing logic, firing logic. All right, yep, everything works out. So what, what's going to happen is firing logic is going to get called from on fire. This will make sense a little bit more um, later on. Um, firing logic. It's kind of arbitrary. This is a, a, a somewhat watered down way of going about doing this uh, just for the sake of uh, the tutorial here. Things would get a little out of hand if I were to do it any other way. So we've got our firing logic and we want to, and what we want to do is we want to be able to return our distance and the number of uh, players left from this function. In order to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to create a tuple. And since the tuple is what we're going to be returning, I'm actually going to get rid of this return type void. And the syntax for it is going to be t tuple tuple. Ooh, I'm inconsistent there. T tuple. And now we have to enter in the data types for which our tuple will be returning. So in this case, we're going to be returning the distance and the number of pawns. So we're going to return a float and an int 32. So we've got ttuple float int 32. I'm going to copy and paste that just to make uh, C++ happy. No more errors. That's great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to return it. And in order to return a tuple, because as of right as of right now we don't have any tuples built, I'm going to say I'm going to return and I'm going to make tuple. So using this function right here, I'll be able to take two variables, and as long as they have the the values of or I'm sorry, the types of float and int32 in that order, then we'll be able to make the tuple and return it using this function. So return make tuple and we're going to return the hit result dot distance and we're also going to return the number of pawns left in the match at this moment so if you if you were to kill somebody then you would want to fire this function off for example so get world Pawn, get num pawns, sounds good. And add a semicolon. And here we have a function that when I fire off uh, a, a bullet here using our handy dandy line trace or raycast, what's going to happen is we're going to get the distance between the start location and the hit location. And what we're going to do then is we're also going to return the number of pawns left in this game. So what, so what I can do here is in on fire, I will say firing logic. I'm just going to set that equal to, no, I'm not going to set that equal to anything. Oh, too much backspace. I'm going to go UE log. Warning, oh, not warning yet. Log temp, then warning. But I also have to be able to put some information in here. And with that, I'm going to say T tuple float int 32. And I'm just going to call this hit information or hit info. And that's going to be equal to firing logic. All right, so now we actually have some uh, a variable to store the data to, uh, the data that's held within the tuple. So we're going to do like what we would normally do. So text, and we're going to be printing out a float and an int. So we're going to do percent 
F and comma percent D. So we're going to be printing out this information, right? But the way that we access the information from the tuple is a little bit counterintuitive, possibly. What it's going to do is it's going to use um, indexing. So for example, the float is stored in the zero index and the int is going to be stored in the one index, just like if it were uh, an array. All right, because that's basically what this is. A tuple is basically a, a type def for our, I think it's for a pair. So it's a type def for a pair um, that specifically says uh, that this is what we're going to be returning. So in order to get that information, what we're going to do is we're going to go hit info and we're going to use the get function. So dot get and then we're going to use the angle brackets to access the zeroth index and here we go parentheses and now we can use our dot operator actually no we're just we're just returning uh, the distance so we don't need to use the dot operator so if you were going to actually what I was thinking of was if you were going to just return the hit result, which I'm going to change a little bit to go ahead and allow me to do that, f hit result, f hit result, okay. So in order for me to do this, what I'd be able to do is I can say use the dot operator to then access the information from the hit result just as if I had pulled the hit result directly. So I can go ahead and do that anyway just because why wouldn't we want to get all of this other wonderful fantastic information. So hit info dot distance and then we're also going to be returning uh, or we're also going to be printing rather the hit info dot get and we're getting the information stored in the one index go ahead and close those parentheses I'm gonna build compile and what we should get is we should get in our in our output log we should see the distance from the muzzle location to the hit location followed by the number of pawns left in our game which there should just be one because there's only this is only a one player demo but this would work uh, similarly to how other games might so play and when I click I see 2291 and 1 and if I go really close then 185 and 1. So as you can see, tuples are a fantastic and easy way of going about returning multiple values from a function. Like I said before, you could also use a struct. So if you wanted to use a struct and call it hit info and store it a bunch of information in here, so float time the time that it was hit you can have float distance and you can have all kinds of stuff and return this hit info but this seems to be a much cleaner solution for at least what we're going to be doing uh, for the purpose of the per for the purposes of this tutorial another thing is that tuples can kind of get a little bit little bit verbose so you can see every time that I have to access the tuple or tuple. I'm going to go ahead and say t tuple f or f hit result int 32. What I can do for these tuples, these long name tuples, is I'm just going to create. I actually don't know what they're called. They're not called type defs anymore. They changed the name in in more modern C++. But I'm going to say using, and I'm going to say hit using hit is equal to t tuple 
and f hit result and int 32 and now I can replace everything that I have saying f hit result int 32 I can replace all of that with the word hit and it just makes everything nice and clean for us again Ta-da! Hopefully that works because I worked really hard on it even though C++ seems to disagree with me. Come on, you can do it. No? Okay. There's definitely something wrong here. But type defs should be working with uh, t-tuples. I just tried it out. I wonder if I'm using the wrong one. F hit result in 32, F hit result in 32. Hmm. You know what? It's probably not liking that I put something above that. Oh, or maybe I forgot a semicolon. That'll do it. So yes, you should be able to go ahead and use these uh, type defs to shorten the length of the names of your tuples. However, I'd, I'd refrain from using it in the header file uh, just to make sure that when you look at the definition of the function that you can always make sure that you know what's going on. And I accidentally hit F5 to run this code. So I'm going to get out of here before something weird happens. <laughs>